you should be familiar with the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT from high school. The ideal gas law is the simplest equation that predicts the relationship between pressure, volume, temperature, and amount of gas. As stated in the name, the ideal gas law applies to an ideal gas. There are two postulates or premises that form the basis of the ideal gas law. The first is that gas molecules have zero volume. The second is that there are zero intermolecular forces between gas molecules. As you consider these postulates, you might begin to question whether these postulates are true. Your questioning is very apt. They are not true, but they are a very good approximation of the properties of many common gases. For example, if we were to blow up the gas molecules so that one nitrogen molecule were the size of a soccer ball, there would only be one gas molecule in this building. The next gas molecule would be over 200 meters away. Gases at one atmosphere are around 1,000 times less dense than liquids and solids. Later in this chapter, we will learn when these postulates break down and introduce the van der Waals equation. This equation gives a better estimate of the state of a gaseous system. Now let's look at each of the terms in the ideal gas law. For pressure, there are many units commonly used for pressure. The SI unit of pressure is the Pascal, but because the Pascal is a very small unit, pressures are commonly reported in kilopascals. The average atmospheric pressure at sea level is one atmosphere or 101.325 kilopascals. However, the metric system is founded on factors of 10. One atmosphere is very close to 10 to the 5 pascals, and the unit of bar is equal to 10 to the 5 pascals. In addition, megapascals, millimeters of mercury, inches of mercury, and pounds per square inch, or PSI, are common units of pressure. I want to point out that IUPAC changed the standard pressure from one atmosphere to one bar in 1982. For volume, in science, volume is commonly measured in liters. In industry, units of cubic meter are also common. Amount of substance is measured in moles, and temperature is measured in Kelvin. R is the gas constant. The gas constant corrects for the proportionality between the various units in the ideal gas law. There are many numerical values and many associated units for R. Some common values are listed here. When using the ideal gas law, you need to select the value of R that has the appropriate units. Now let's apply the ideal gas law. This is real data for a 30-odd-6 cartridge. We're going to determine the pressure inside the cartridge immediately after the decomposition of the gunpowder and before the bullet discharges down the barrel. So I have just rewritten the decomposition reaction for nitrocellulose. On the left hand side we have two moles of nitrocellulose reacting to produce four moles of gaseous carbon dioxide, seven moles of gaseous carbon monoxide, one mole of solid carbon, seven moles of gaseous water vapor, and water comes off as a gas because of the high temperature of the decomposition, and three moles of nitrogen gas. A key point for all of this is that two moles of nitrocellulose ends up producing 4 plus 7 is 11, 18, 21. Two moles of nitrocellulose is equal to 21 moles of gas. Now that we have this relationship, we can go through and calculate how many moles of nitrocellulose and then how many moles of gas we have. So we start with 46 grains of nitrocellulose, and the conversion to grams is given in the problem. Now, we need the molecular mass of nitrocellulose, and this is 297 grams per mole.
and then we can convert to moles of gas. Now, as we look at this, we see that grains of nitrocellulose cancels, grams of nitrocellulose cancels, and moles of nitrocellulose cancels, and we're left with moles of gas. And when we go through and do the math, we find that we have 0 0.1054 moles of gas. Now that we know how many moles of gas are produced, we can take that and substitute it into the ideal gas equation, rearrange this to solve for pressure, and determine the pressure inside of the chamber. So P is equal to Now, since we want to pick a pressure, we might as well pick atmospheres. So the value of R here is 0 0.08206 liters atmospheres per mole Kelvin. The temperature was given in the problem as 5620 Kelvin. And the volume inside the cartridge was 4.85 cubic centimeters, which I'm just going to convert to liters on the fly. And so moles cancels with moles, liters cancels with liters, and kelvins cancels with kelvins. And so when you substitute all of that into a calculator, you find that you end up with 1.00 times 10 to the four atmospheres. And that is the pressure inside of the cartridge immediately after the decomposition of the nitrocellulose, but before the bullet is discharged down the chamber. There are two sets of standard conditions. Standard temperature and pressure or STP, and standard ambient temperature and pressure, or SATP. The difference between these two is the temperature. STP is at a temperature of 273.15 Kelvin, or zero degrees Celsius, which is the freezing point of water. SATP is at a temperature of 298.15 Kelvin, or 25 degrees Celsius. Both have a standard pressure of one bar, not one atmosphere. For your information, STP was the historical standard because it is easy to maintain zero degrees Celsius in an ice water bath. Imagine doing experiments in a Slurpee. Realize that many of the historical experiments were done in the 1700s and 1800s, well before the invention of electricity, refrigeration, and generally before science's ability to maintain a constant temperature. STP creates a controlled environment because of a fundamental property of water. This example looks at different ways of producing oxygen gas. This question was inspired by the TV show Air Crash Investigation, where it said that the oxygen masks only supply oxygen for 10 to 15 minutes. The first chemical reaction is the reaction that produces oxygen for the emergency masks and airplanes, and we will focus on this reaction to answer parts A and B. Reviewing part A of this question, we need to calculate the volume of oxygen produced at SATP. However, we do not have the amount of each reagent, just the total mass of the reagents. To start, we need to determine the amount of either sodium chlorate or iron that is in this canister. So I've just rewritten the decomposition reaction of sodium chlorate plus iron to form oxygen. What we know, given the problem, is that we have 100 grams 
of these reactants. We know the stoichiometry of this reaction is a one-to-one -one mole ratio, but what mass of each of these is required to give us that one-to-one -one mole ratio? And the answer requires us to come up with the mass ratio. So the molecular mass of sodium chlorate is 106.5 grams per mole. The molecular mass of iron is 55.8 grams per mole. If we have one mole of each of these, we have 106.5 grams and 55.8 grams. This totals 162.3 grams. So if we only have a total of 100 grams, we can calculate the mass ratio. And using sodium chloride as an example, we have 106.5 grams of sodium chlorate in a total mass of 162.3 grams. This is our 100 gram sample size. And when we work this out, we find out that we have 65.6 grams of sodium chlorate in the sample. So of this 100 grams up here, it is composed of 65.6 grams of sodium chlorate. Now, how much oxygen is produced when we have 65.6 grams of sodium chlorate? Well, need to convert to moles. The mole ratio from the chemical equation is one mole of oxygen And now, grams of sodium chlorate cancels with grams of sodium chlorate. Moles of sodium chlorate cancels out there. And when we do the math, we find out that we have 0 0.616 moles of oxygen. We were asked to calculate the amount of oxygen that was, or the volume of oxygen that is present at SATP. So, now starting with the ideal gas equation, we're interested in volume. And volume will be equal to and at SATP we're working in bar, so this is multiplied by And at SATP, it is 298.15 Kelvin. And the pressure, by definition, is 1 bar. So moles cancel. And of course, we're left with units of volume. Substituting that into a calculator, we find out we have 15.3 liters of oxygen produced. So 15.3 liters of oxygen are produced. The second calculation requires us to determine how long the oxygen in A will last at SATP. There is no formula for this and this second calculation is answered completely using unit analysis. So to start, let's just start with the volume of 
that the person breathes. We know the person breathes twelve breaths per minute, and we know that oxygen is twenty one percent or zero point two one of the available air. So following the units through, at this point in time right now, we find the volume of oxygen per minute. We're also told that the person only uses 25% of the available oxygen. And so at this point in the calculation, we have the amount of oxygen oxygen used per minute. And so plugging all of this into a calculator, we find out that the value is 283 milliliters of oxygen per minute. That is the amount of oxygen consumed by the person per minute. We're told from part A that we have 15.3 liters of oxygen. And from this problem right here, we know that in one minute, the person uses 0 0.283 liters of oxygen and I've just converted from milliliters to liters. And so when one does the calculation here, one finds that this works out to be 54 minutes. So according to this calculation, oxygen will theoretically last 54 minutes. However, the fact that only 20, the person only uses 25% of the available oxygen and other losses results in it only lasting one quarter of this value, which is in the 10 to 15 minute range reported in the video.